just went down there. I went to Santa Marta because we were working with some people from Santa Marta. We were going to do a, a, a pot run. So that, that's when I got kidnapped by the, uh, by the gorillas. And that was the story of Mario giving me, you know, I gave him the gun and then he gave me. What became of Mario? Um, Mario, shortly after that Easter dinner, um, he jumped on an Amtrak. He told me, I'm going to New York by train hmm. months later. He says, okay, I'll, I'll meet you out in San Francisco. He says he jumped on a train in Miami to, to New York with his sister, the sister's daughter, and a newborn baby. And he started to smoke bass, I guess, when the train took off in Miami. By the time they got to North Carolina, he was so based out, so paranoid, that he shot his sister, he oh, shot right. the baby, and the newborn, they had a three-day siege, and the FBI hostage negotiator for three days was talking to Mario, trying to save the newborn baby's life. Through the bullet holes in the train, they had to put in little um, things of, um, what is it, um, when they put the, the IV. Mm. So he could IV the baby. The baby was dehydrating. They say that the stench, the smell of the dead bodies inside the the the, the train car with Mario was just unbearable. And it was in the summer. So that's in the book. And that's a yeah. you know you Google Mario and you'll find out this you know hostage. Yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah. I was I was getting the names mixed up, but crazy, that was, that was pretty crazy. Riveting. And didn't and someone I, go talk to him during that though too? What, yeah. Am I remembering that right? It wasn't just the negotiator, like you or somebody, like talked to him while that was going on. No. Um, what happened was I was in San Francisco, and suddenly I get a phone call from my mother. And says, "Have you seen the paper?" I go, "What paper?" It says, "Any paper." And I go, "What? Well, no, I haven't seen." It. I think your friend is on the front cover, and I said, "No, no, no, that's not that's not my friend. That's that guy on the cover is Colombian. My friend was." Uh, Venezuela, well, it looks a lot like him. My mother, I mean, because he had come to dinner at the house for yeah. Easter. Why? I thought this was the one, as I read about this. Crazy. That, that Someone was talked crazy. to him during it. The FBI, one of the negotiators, since he claimed and everybody knew that he was based out, and when you smoke base, you get so paranoid, he killed his sister and he killed the... the one of the persons involved in that actually traced back Mario's steps and did smoke base to see what kind of effect it had on you mm. and some psychologist and wrote about that. Wow. About the effects of base and paranoia and all that shit. You know what it was? I think it was you went to see Polly in a hotel room. Or something. It wasn't. The oh no Mario no no thing. no no no! That was before that. Right right right. I'm saying whoa, I whoa. I was I that's was remembering. Another, that's another. I was classic. remembering something totally different. That's my point. After Mario whacked the nine Peruvians, he decided to take it easy. So he rented a motel room in Santa Rosa, California. <laughs> this was it. Yeah. And he started to drink and to smoke base, and he called some hookers. Nice. And for three days, he was just going at it. And then he started to, to, to hit the hookers. And uh, Brian calls me and says, man, we're going to get, this is all going to go to hell. Mario is stuck up in some hotel room in Santa Rosa, beating the fuck out of these hookers. And uh, this is, this is going to go to shit. The cops are going to go. This is going to turn into a shit show. So they... Uh, Brian spoke to Mario, and Mario said, well, have uh, a loco come over to see me. A loco was me. A loco? Yeah, he they called, called me, you he the called, crazy? Yeah, he called me a loco. <laughs> and uh, I have, yeah, he, he'll only talk to you because he trusts you. He knows, you know, once again, I never posed a threat to these guys. To, to them, I was just a, a nice, naive, no, no malice and I walk in the room, and Mario is sitting there with his shirt off, with a uh, his 
you know, always used that Browning nine millimeter duct taped to his hand hmm. with a, uh, el peine and, and then uh, uh, another peine in, on the on the on the table. Oh, what? Uh, the clip. Oh. Duct taped to his hand, and he had one of the hookers rolling him up, and he was smoking bass and drinking. I go, what the fuck? And so I went in there, and I started to drink with him, <laughs> and then I started to mellow him out, and I started getting rid of the hookers, and uh, I started telling, you know, take this, and I gave him Valium mm. to mellow his ass down. And I was drinking too because I had to drink with him. Says, Mario, let's talk. Let's get rid of these hookers. I mean, let's you and me talk. We got things to talk about. We can't have these hookers listening in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get rid of them. So I got rid of the fucking hookers. And Brian made sure he paid them off. And made sure that because you know he had hit them a couple mm. of them. Yeah, bruised up. After a while, he fell asleep. After a day, I was in there for about a day with him. So it's, you don't come off a fucking three day binge right. just like that. And that was, so that was the one I was thinking of. Okay. So, and you had said Poli went back to Colombia when he got hot. So yeah. he's out of the picture. Po Poli left and Mario came in. All right. Poli leaves. Mario comes in. And you, did, did you go and meet the Ochoas while you're doing this? Like, did you personally go and actually like I get with them in Colombia? Not directly with uh, George. Or Fabio, I dealt with Orejas, and I dealt with a Fabito through his secretary, La, Ma La Mami. But mostly, my one-on-one -on -one dealings were with their cousins, the um, Roberto Luis, Monster, and um, their Vasquez, is, uh, Vélez is their last name. Do you remember your first trip to Colombia? My first trip to Colombia was probably 1980, 81, around and 1980. What was the nature? 80. Like, were you called down there to meet no, with some of I these just, guys? I just went down there. I went to Santa Marta because we were working with some people from Santa Marta. We were going to do a, a a pot run. So that, that's when I got kidnapped by the uh, by the gorillas. By oh, the, uh, oh you got kidnapped group. by the oh, yeah. gorillas. Because, uh, you know, we were going to do this pot run, and I wanted to make sure, and I wanted to see the pot. I just didn't want to take 35,000 pounds <laughs> because they said it was good. So, you know, typical me. So, you know, we started going from Santa Marta. We went towards Venezuela. And por el, la Sierra del Pibi High or uh, Pibi High. The bottom line is we crossed in some t into some territory that was no man's land, and it was run by, uh, I think it was UP, Union Patriotica, or it was a group that was uh, stationed in, in, in that part of Colombia. And it was really strange because it, you knew you weren't under any government control because they had their own schools. Mm -hmm. This wasn't La Farc, and it wasn't EP. And it wasn't the EPL who were very violent. These were less violent uh, guerrilla movement. They had schools. But point is that, you know, El Comandante, uh, you know, held us and told us, what the hell are you doing here? And I told him, we're, we're, we're buying pot. And I said, what do you mean you're buying pot? I mean, you know, from who? And I said, well, I guess from you now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they wanted to hold me for ransom. Mm. And I said, you know, that's not a good deal. Why hold me for ransom? You know, if you have the pot, I'm here to buy 35,000 pounds. If you have the pot, I'll buy it from you. How about your the people in Santa Marta? F fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with you now. I don't see them here. So he kind of liked me. We sat down. We worked it out, $10 a pound, $350,000. I gave them a down payment. They shipped, when I got back to Santa Marta, I got back with red eye and everything because of the jungle. Uh, you know, I left with some Lucchese boots. I came back with these rubber boots because the guy tells me, well, how are we going to seal this deal? 
And he looks at my boots. He said, you know, I kind of like your <laughs> boots. I said, yeah, well. They're and yours. he says, I'm going to give you my rubber boots because that's what the gorillas wear, rubber boots. Mm -hmm. And I'm and you give me those uh, nice, fancy uh, polka dotted boots. So you were you were moving pot, though, too. The only time in my life I did. I was going to say, Big because mistake. It's, it's way heavier. It's no, way no, no. lower margins. Bunch of bullshit. Bunch of, we lost the load. Oh, I still made it. good on the 350 to the guy, Ooh. but uh, the only time, the only time Where I Where were you out. trying to bring it through, Florida? Bahamas, yeah. Bad move. Uh, that, that was an accident waiting to happen. I had this guy, Tim McBride, in here for episodes, I believe it was 105 and 106, where he talked all about his career doing that. He operated and actually ended up becoming like the godfather of this island called Chokoloski Island in Florida on the oh, West Coast. Oh, I, I know where that is. Uh, yeah. One of my guys, uh, John, what's his last name? He was a fugitive living in Cancun, and he was from Chokoloski. Yes. Best John, cast oh my God, chaplain. What was his name? John Chaplin. Tall, mm. big guy. He was living in uh, south guy. of Cancun. Okay. Best captain I've ever seen. He used to do the run by himself. Wait, wait, that's not Captain John. I'm forgetting the names here. Is that Ball Captain guy, John? Tall. From... I can't. I can't remember. Tough motherfucker. I can't remember. But Tim was the guy. They would go out on the boat. Him, the captain, one other dude, and they would well, pick up all the loads. They used to do it. What, what, what would happen is they would bring in from Colombia all the weed on a cattle ship. And so then when they would get when they would get there to switch it over on the boats, shit would be too heavy or whatever. So they would just throw the cattle in the water and they'd just drown. <laughs> it was so it's like fucked the swimming up. pigs of the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know that he ran that for a long time and that's where the pot came in. But as you said, you only tried to do this once and you yeah, lost it. Once so. that was that. Yeah. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.